Bethlehem Chapel. This is where John Huss ministered publicly to the people, not in Latin, the common language, but actually in Czech to the, so that the common people could understand the truth. We see that Huss is the continuation of John Wycliffe from England, and really with these two brothers, it was the shift from the authority of the Catholic Church in tradition over to the authority of the scripture to begin the line of the truth. And actually inside, although it's closed today, there is a picture inside with Wycliffe, Huss, and Luther. And with Wycliffe, you have a spark. With Huss, you have a, uh, a flame. And then with Luther, you have the torch. This just shows us the, the line of truth in the Lord's recovery. Revelation 17.6 footnote 2 is a very special footnote in the Recovery Version Bible that speaks of the distinction between saints and witnesses of Jesus. It reads, the saints are those who are separated, sanctified unto God, who live a holy life for God, even unto death. The witnesses are those who are a living testimony of the Lord Jesus and who are faithful unto death. The witnesses of Jesus are also saints, however, the saints may just live a separated and holy life, not complying with the apostate church, and may not come forward to testify against the apostasy of the Roman church as the witnesses such as Antipas in 2.13. Our brother John Huss was such a brother who came forward to testify against the apostasy of the Roman church. In the face of opposition, he stood for the absoluteness of the truth and did not sacrifice God's word, even unto death. Huss's life as a servant of God used to bridge John Wycliffe, who is regarded as the morning star of the Reformation, and Luther, had a profound influence on Martin Luther himself. Even Brother Lee once commented that the seeds John Huss sowed resulted in Martin Luther a hundred years later. Early in his monastic career, Martin Luther happened upon a volume of sermons by John Huss, who had been condemned as a heretic and burned at the stake. His writings made a deep impression on Martin Luther at an early age. He wrote, I was overwhelmed in, with astonishment. I could not understand for what cause they burnt so great a man who explained the scriptures with so much gravity and skill. Interestingly, it was John Huss who during his last trial and a hundred years earlier foretold of the coming of Luther when he replied to the threat of death, Today you will roast a lean goose, but a hundred years from now you will hear a swan sing, whom you will have unroasted and no trap or net will catch him for you. Huss's testimony was sealed by his own blood through martyrdom, but today he's a part of so great a cloud of witnesses, beseeching us to seek the truth, listen to the truth, learn the truth, love the truth, speak the truth, and to hear the truth, and to defend the truth to the death. We're in front of the statue of John Huss here in Old Town Prague. Behind me the inscription says, Love one another, wish one another the truth. Truly our brother, from the beginning to the end, he was faithful to the truth, stood for the truth, and was absolute for the truth. After his death, we know that there was a lot of violent protests and movements under the Hussites, but there was also a line of non-violent gathering, and that was under the brother Peter Czeczewski. And we can trace his recovery of the United Czech Brethren as the beginning, the start of the Moravian Brethren under Count Zizendorf.